This is actually a lot more docile on pavement than uh, the Super Cub. So we'll put this one on the pavement yeah. there? Yeah, okay. Wheel landings on pavement. The last step before going solo in the tail dragger. For my third tail wheel lesson, the Super Cub was still down for maintenance. But luckily, we had a Cetabria to fill in. The big seeker with the pavement, if you bounce, don't start, you know, jockeying and try and save in the bounce. Just hold the landing attitude. Okay. It will settle itself down. Concentrate more on footwork than handwork. Wheel landings, or wheelies as some people call them, are all about landing on the main gear with the tail dragger and keeping the tail off the ground. So you're not doing a three-pointer, which is when you touch down with the tail and the mains at the same time. But it's definitely an art form because you have to come in faster than you would if you were doing a three-pointer. Yeah, 75 is the speed at which you have visibility and a very comfortable amount of control authority, but it's by no means slow enough to actually land in a, on okay. a short runway. Fortunately, without flaps, slow enough means you can't see. Like because the nose is up so high, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, typically that's why slips were taught so much in tailwheel planes because typically what people would do is they'd come in a little bit fast and then they would fly the slip all the way down almost to touchdown yeah. and then do the landing almost by feel. So spoiler alert, uh, I'm about to get humbled here because I'm totally going to screw this up. Uh, in my defense, we're just returning back from an upset recovery and spin training flight, which was super awesome, and it's a really cool video. Check that one out if you haven't seen it. I'll put the link in the description and uh, annotation here. But uh, it was a really cool flight, and I was still kind of buzzing from how awesome it was, and I was not really focusing on the fact that I was about to do the most challenging landing that I'd done yet in my tailwheel training. It's my first time trying to land on pavement and coming in with any bit of a side load is just not cool and you can immediately start swerving and with the tail up you just pivot on the mains and that's essentially what happens so let's uh, watch me screw it up Victor off November short final 09 yeah but now I'm high well you're not, again for the pavement you got more room to play with yeah. speed is good try and make your pitch in puts a little smoother less about a specific pitch attitude as opposed to just a little bit of pressure right yeah and if it's trimmed at the right speed, then you're pulling it away from that trim position with slight amounts of pressure. Add some power because I'm stalling. Yeah, you're all right. Uh, stalling more, more because of the abrupt movements than anything else. Okay. Right? Power all the way. And a little side load there. Uh, uh, stay loose uh, on the feet. Loose on the feet. You're tensing up. Punch and jab. Punch and jab. Yeah. I completely froze when I felt it starting to go. You can really hear the tires squealing with the side load in this camera angle. Check out that left wheel. It comes right off the ground. And Dennis has to totally step in to fight me on the pedals because I'm just locked up. Never, never kind of tighten up. I call that holding and hoping. <laughs> gotcha. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't, because I got one wheel off the ground there. Yeah, I definitely tensed up. Interesting. Yep. I don't think I was doing that on the grass. I don't know what, uh, I felt like I needed, I think now I could see a center line that I wasn't holding, and I was, like, fighting for it. Well, it's, it, the tendency is to feel that, okay, I'm swerving to the left, so that creates G-force to the right, so you tend to try and uh, reduce it by adding aileron pressure, but of course, once you're on the ground, it didn't work. Yes. Was I doing that? I thought I was doing it with the rudder, but... No, the rudder went into quick-drying cement. <laughs> yeah, I was really definitely tensed up on those rudders. Yep. So we called it a day after that one in the Cetabria, which is fine, because it had been like an hour and a bit flight. The next lesson, the Super Cub was back online, and I was going to nail my wheel landings. I'd been thinking about it. I was mentally ready, and it really is all about the roll and focusing on punch and jab and being loose, but aggressive and confident with the rudder so here we go and I have added the pedal cam and the tailwheel cam because I'm gonna be studying my punching and jabbing for this lesson that's a good sporting day for this I guess oh yeah so given that we've got wind down one four we're gonna to have to work on some wheel landings with you yep I'm good with wheel landing I mean, we haven't done it in the Super Cub so okay Okay, punch and jab, loose on the feet, Charlie. Yep. Yeah, Burlington traffic, Boss Peel Oscar is left downwind, runway 1-4, Burlington. Oh, touch and go. 
For the sake of efficiency, I'm going to edit this lesson down to the important parts, so I'm going to be truncating a lot of things. So here we are on downwind. And this reminds me of an important lesson that Dennis gave me in the Cetabria that I had forgotten to apply in the Cetabria, but I'm not forgetting to apply it in the Super Cub. Here's another pre-landing thing. Roll the shoulders, wiggle the hips. Loosen up. Loosen up. Yeah. Stay loose. Fluid. Be the plane. Yeah, wear it. Wear the plane. So that's a big one for me and I've applied it ever since, uh, both on my downwind check and when I'm lining up with the runway for takeoff. You gotta stay loose, it's a big one for me. Anyway, back into the Cub. And to the white arc. We're doing one notch of flaps, wheel landing. Wheel like landing's on pavement, that's all I recommend. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking for about 70, 65. 70 for a wheelie on the pavement. Okay. So the idea here is I'm not, I'm going to just really try to fly it on nice and smooth. I'm not going to be doing a three-point flare. Yeah, you just want to just arrest the descent rate so that the airplane is still descending ever so slightly. And then as soon as it touches the runway, not before, as soon as it touches the runway, just gently nudge the stick forward an inch or two, and it will stay stuck to the runway. Don't force it on. Yeah, everything is going to be gentle now. Yeah. All right, so now we're just going gently, nothing aggressive. There you go, push forward. Sorry, I'm just concentrating on my rudder here. Yeah, push forward, and then you don't have to concentrate too much. Just shove the stick right oh, forward, more just than hold that. it. Okay. Yeah. Did I have the tail down yeah. just then? No, it's oh, not okay. touching the ground yet. No, oh, okay, and we're going. And then we're going. Just keep the stick forward. Let, as soon as the tail comes up, then you can neutralize it. By then, probably the thing will take off again. Nice. Yeah, okay, rid of my flaps. Yeah. Very nice for the first time. And yeah, that's why you just push it forward, then you can just kind of set it and forget it. You don't have to concentrate on it anymore. Right. If there was a crosswind, you would push it forward and into the corner where the crosswind is coming from. Right. But then you could focus all your concentration on your feet. Okay. I mean, your, your footwork was good. That's what I was worried about. Okay. But yeah, when you're just... Uh, Especially when you're just testing it, just keep pushing forward on it. As long as you don't hit the brakes, you're not going to nose the thing over. Right. So I could have ended this video here, but I have some really awesome footage from this lesson, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep editing tightly, so it's going to flow fast. It's going to feel like the ski flying video, which if you haven't seen, definitely check it out. But I'm going to try to get this one into the 15 minute range, so stick it out, it's worth it. Okay, just, just carry a little bit of energy in there. Yeah, so you're going to run out of yeah, time to do a nice yeah, wheelie yeah. if you get the, the plane going too slow. Right, and I did that, so I'm already at 60. I'll keep the power it is then. Nice. Okay, just stand on the rudder, and here comes the power. Would we normally put flaps up then do the roll, or just no? Yeah. Just It'll take off with one yeah, okay. of flaps, so why complicate things? Yeah. Okay, getting rid of flaps. So my center line tracking is not awesome, but it's not horrible. It's on the runway. <laughs> as long as I don't see that center line going outside of the wheels, I'm not going to be too worried about it. All right, cool. All right, so this time I'll try to keep the speed at 70 so that I can do a bit of a better energy management there for the wheel landing. Yeah, if you try stretching the glide, like if you come in a bit too low and start stretching the glide, you're going to be too slow to gently set it down for yeah. a wheel landing. You'll end up three-pointing it. Yep. And the reason why we're doing wheel landing practice is because of well, the long runway and crosswinds? Yeah, to know how to do it for long runways, turbulence, crosswinds, and also because this thing just doesn't like three-pointing on asphalt. That's, I suspect, how the tailwheel innards got damaged in the first place, so. And now we're dealing with new, new stuff there? It's not fixed yet. Oh, no. it's not? Okay. Yeah, I guess it's worth noting the tailwheel had sort of been damaged. It might have been from a hard landing or just from being old. But anyway, it was kind of free castering, wasn't really steering properly. But it's not the end of the world. You can steer with the rudder. So we were able to do this flight, but it got fixed shortly after. Yeah, Burlington traffic, Fox Q Oscar is final. 1 4, touch and go, Burlington. All right, so that's good. With 70, I feel a little high, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's a long runway. I'm going to fly it in. I guess I have it high. I slip it. Up like that. Get back to the center line, 70, nice and stable. I'm not fighting with the trim, so that's good. Hold my pitch. Stable at 70. 
All right, gently gonna rest the descent here. Uh, a little bouncy, but pushing the stick forward now. There goes my runner, great. Yep, push it, push it right for you. See, now your tail wheel's on the ground. Oh, so I should've held, should held it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should stay up until you're ready to let it down. Okay. But it doesn't matter, it's not chattering, right? That's what I'm worried about. I don't want to feel it going get the, 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 the right, head right. back there, because that's what blows the innards out of it. Okay, so here we go. Oops, wasn't thinking about the crosswind. Alright, flaps are going away. Well, she reminds you when yes, you're she done. Does. So, do you want to switch to some really more challenging crosswinds? Yeah, let's head over to 09 and okay. try that out. So this one coming up isn't too bad for a first attempt at a crosswind wheel landing on pavement, but I'm definitely over controlling it. If you watch the stick, I'm just stirring the soup and way over controlling it. It's definitely wiggly. But this is why it's cool to be able to review this stuff, because I can see my performance here and clearly it needs work, but it's 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 getting there. Okay, so my crosswind is going to be from the right. And it'll be a pretty good one. Alright, gonna get ready for the cross controls. Aileron is gonna be into the wind on the right. Yeah, just stop wiggling it, keep it to the right. There you go. Put, put it in the right corner and I just leave it. it there. Yep, okay, so here comes power. Concentrate, punch and jab. Alright, here comes power. Keeping it in the right corner. Nice. Yeah, I was definitely a little wiggly. Trying to find that place to keep it. Yeah, so I should have just been a little bit more... So just, that's why I say, just park the aileron and, and, and see the what pitch, and then that way you can concentrate more on the, on the feet. Okay, loose on the feet, not going to wiggle the stick. I got 70 knots, stable. Back with the power titch, but not too much. Turkey Vulture over the runway. Alright, cross controls. I want them to stabilize. No wigglies. Guess I had too much speed, eh? Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't look down once I committed, but there you go, eh? Alright, whatever, we're gonna fix it. Right. The footwork I'm worried about. You know, How am I doing? It's good, it's instinctive, oh, okay. but the only other thing I was going to suggest is that you don't have to start the slip early necessarily, just hold it in the crab and then you've got a better ability to control okay. the light path because you know exactly what to expect, okay. and then when you kind of start to round out as you're starting to arrest the descent rate, then start slipping it because then you get kind of a double bonus there. One is you're controlling for the crosswind, and the other is that you're creating enough drag that the airplane sits on the ground and stays there okay. because of that drag. Right. So yeah, don't start to slip too early. Just bring it in nicely in the crab, and then as you're about to touch down, that's when you hold the wing down and then give it the rudder it needs to, to line it up. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna fly a crab, and I'm gonna initiate the slip during the transition. All right. Yeah, so this hasn't been beautiful, but I'm not hating it. Yeah, all right. clear nine. Okay, so now I'm kind of getting into my slip, or is that too soon? No, still too soon. Just, oh, okay. just get her set up, and then now just keep now that right it. wing tucked like down. Like traffic across the third start joining the... Oh, that was a cast, eh? Down, left down in for runway one. Yeah, but you see that's... Okay, let me have it for a second. I'm just going to show you something here. That was the hazard right there, because... As soon as the wind pushed you to one side, you started you started traveling this way across the runway. Right. And then when the wind hits you, it's going to point and it's going to knock you over on your side. Right. Let's get the flaps up. Flaps yeah, up. So the priority as you're touching down, in order to touch down gently, obviously, is pitch. Yep. But the problem is that once the rubber does meet the road, if it's not pointing the right way, it's going to shoot you off into the rhubarb. Yep. And if there's any drift involved, then that's going to create an incredible amount of side load, which is going to increase the swerving effect that you're worried about, right? Yep. So I'll give you a talk through play-by-play. 
Okay, so I'm just crabbing yep. just to maintain the center line. Then I'm just going to arrest the rate of descent a little bit. And I'm going to line it up. And I'm going to try and put this wheel down. Oh, yeah, I see. see? It. And I'm not doing anything to the stick other than just keeping it stuffed in the corner. Yeah, that's that right. All my concentration is on my feet. If I'm going too fast, then it'll lift one wheel up, but that's okay. I want the right wheel staying on the ground. I do not want it to come up. That's I think I was afraid to do that much of a pitch down. Well, cool. it's, yeah, it's more, like of a, it's more of just a pressure. You just got to apply a positive pressure because you're counting on that friction to yeah. help hold you in place. But nonetheless, you still have to work the feet a bit more. Okay? Well, all right, flaps are going away. Yep. Power is going 24. And your plane. My airplane. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to be getting into the, you know, chewing gum, rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. It's easier to just stuff it, stuff the stick into the corner it belongs, and yeah. that way all of the concentration can be on your feet. You do have to do a little bit of, you know, juggling just prior to touchdown, with, you know, priority shifting, a gentle touchdown, but a quick alignment just before that. Yep. But then once the wheels are down, stuffing the stick into the corner is what's going to help you concentrate more on everything else. All right, so once I get there, I'm going to stuff it. Here, long final runway one four. Stop. There you go. Oh, yeah, that uh, makes it so much easier. Four, wow. Yeah, just getting that done confidently. Yeah, yeah that's, I just took that off my plate, and then I could think more about my feet. All right. So if you made it to the end, thanks for watching, and thanks to Dennis for this amazing lesson and for being willing to share it which again was heavily edited, so keep that in mind. This was obviously a much longer lesson that I cut down for the sake of keeping it entertaining. For more information about Flight Chops and how you can be a part of it, please check out my Patreon link and keep your Flight Chops sharp.